Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video and the next, we're going to see two different pathways to actually process this sugar called glucuronic acid. Now, in other videos, we've seen that glucuronic acid can be activated to UDP glucuronic acid and then uh, ligated to different molecules, and that's involved in phase two metabolism. Um, in the liver for drugs and detoxification. But there's actually two other ways to get rid of glucuronic acid, and we're going to look at those here. One of the ways, which is going to be the biosynthesis of vitamin C or ascorbic acid, we'll see that in the next video. Here we're going to look at a straight degradation pathway, which is going to convert glucuronic acid into something useful, and we'll see that it's actually going to be something that enters the pentose phosphate pathway, also called the hexose monophosphate shunt. Let's look at that pathway here. So here's the molecule glucuronic acid. Notice it's a derivative of glucose, but this six position has been oxidized into a carboxylic acid. The first step of the catabolism for glucuronic acid is reduction and ring opening. This is going to be catalyzed by glucuronate reductase, and it's going to use electrons from NADPH. Essentially, the hydride is going to attack this position right here. It's going to attack the six position, and that's going to open up the ring and create a molecule called L-gullinate. This gullinate is going to be oxidized by gullonic acid dehydrogenase. It's going to take the electrons essentially from this oxygen right here and convert it into a carbonyl. So notice on the three position, uh, we now have a carbonyl. This molecule is called 3-ketogullinate. And notice in this reaction, we get out an NADH for energy. Now, 3-ketogullinate is going to react with an enzyme called 3-ketogullinate decarboxylase. Essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take this carboxyl group on the one position of ketogullinate and it's going to remove it as carbon dioxide. Now you may think you've seen this molecule zollulose before and you are probably not right. Uh, you've seen something very similar. You've probably seen its isomer, d zollulose which is the form of this molecule that actually enters the pentose phosphate pathway. L-zellulose is not any use to the cell, so we're going to have to actually convert it into the D-isomer. This is going to be catalyzed by two successive enzymes. The first one is L-zellulose dehydrogenase. This carbonyl right here, which is now position 2, is going to be reduced by this dehydrogenase and the electrons from NADPH. That's going to generate this molecule called xylitol. In fact, you may have seen xylitol before. It's actually an artificial sweetener that you can buy in drugstores. Um, actually more natural than things like aspartame, considering that this is actually a normal intermediate in glucuronic acid catabolism. Xylitol can then be reoxidized into the D-isomer of xylulose by d xylulose dehydrogenase. Again, the electrons are going to be taken from this hydroxyl group right here where my mouse is. It's going to be oxidized into a carbonyl with the subsequent production of NADH for energy. And now this d xylulose will be phosphorylated at the position over here on the right side by d xylulose 5-kinase. Again, this phosphate is going to come from ATP. It's going to give you both ADP and this molecule, xylulose 5-phosphate. It's technically the D-isomer, but this is the form of this compound that's actually going to be input into the pentose phosphate pathway. And I have a separate video on the pentose phosphate pathway that I'll try to remember to put in the description of this video so you can go watch information on that, and you will see this compound. Now, glucuronic acid, as we'll see in the next video, has other functions. Now, I did mention we can actually link it to UDP and use it in phase 2 metabolism in the liver, but another very important function of glucuronic acid is going to be the biosynthesis of vitamin C, or ascorbic acid. And that's actually what we're going to look at in the next video. So you can see on here that actually it's not directly glucuronic acid. It's actually gullinic acid that serves as a branch point between catabolism towards the pentose phosphate pathway, and then up here towards vitamin C. And that's what we're going to look at next. But hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the metabolic catabolism for glucuronic acid. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.